Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us for this webinar with Monica Reynolds. You're gonna learn not everything you need to know, it's only a webinar, but a lot of what you need to know. When it's time to make that shift to make your very first hire, which can be absolutely terrifying. Monica remembers making the first hire. I remember making my first hire. You're gonna get some solid insights. So my name is Frank Klesitz with Viral Marketing. You know, Monica will introduce me here in a minute of why I'm here, just to kind of help moderate a good webinar for you. But this is the first of seven different webinars we're going to do. This is the first of seven, and you're welcome to register for every single one. When we announce the webinar number two and webinar number three, uh, you'll get an email registration if you've seen this, and you can register because there's an order of operations of your hires. Monica, really quick, the seven webinars, let's go through them. What is the order of hiring your staff, one through seven, with the first hire being your first assistant? And each hire is one of those webinars in order. So today is the hiring your first assistant. What's the title of the second webinar or the second person you hire, uh, Monica? How to hire your second assistant. And a lot of people think it's a buyer agent next, but no, you got to have the business to hire a buyer agent. So it's your second assistant and people don't know what to pay and who to hire and what would they do. I've got it all for you in our second webinar. Third webinar, third hire in order. Buyer showing assistant slash agent. They have to be licensed in most states. They are going to show property for you. They're not going to write offers. They're not going to negotiate. They're going to show property. Fourth webinar, fourth hire. A full-fledged buyer agent. Fifth. Fifth hire, you know, to me, your fifth hire is going to be a listing specialist, another listing agent. Okay, or an ISA. You know, or an ISA, you can either try, depending on where your business is and what you feel you need, you kind of need to evaluate what your marketing strategies are, where your leads are coming from, how much you're spending on lead generation. You have to have lead generation systems to support an ISA. Plus, I mean, they're dialing the phone, you know, yeah. the phone, the cash register. However, you've got to have some systems in place. So either one of those can go back and forth. So we'll probably go with... so. When you look at the sixth person, it's going to be your director of operations. Got it. And then we have the seventh, which could be either more in depth on the ISA or the listing agent. Correct. Correct. Got it. So the listing agent, the ISA, the director of operations really should be your last hire because you built out your team. Now you need someone to manage the whole team so that you stay the rainmaker. So, you know, to be very specific, we'll probably go with an ISA first, then a listing uh, specialist, and then an ISA being the seventh hire. I mean, Got I'm it. sorry, director of operations. Director being of operations, the last person to manage yes. all of them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Monica, how many years have you been in the real estate game? 44 beautiful years. And I've been in seven recessions, seven shifts. And I go, <laughs> this is where you thrive, but you need a team member to help you thrive. There's no one better in the real estate space to teach how to scale up your real estate team with your hires and how to manage them than Monica. Thanks, so you guys Frank. are in for a wonderful uh, learning opportunity with this. Um, these webinars are all designed. It's not enough information to fully, it's a webinar. So you do have a paid course. Let's get that out of the way. You have a paid course and you have some events coming up. Tell everyone about your paid course. Well, of course, I've got the perfect real estate assistant real quickly. You can go to mapscoaching.com. The next event is probably in March, I believe. And then I've got a great two-day event if you want everything right away. It's January 13th and 14th. It's in Austin. It's live. Um, if you're with Keller Williams, we've also got Linda McKissick will be there, Mo Anderson for two days. And it's extremely affordable. You get lunches included. It's two powerful days with two speakers that are going to be there the entire time. And of course, I'll be leading it. So I really like you to consider that. We've got 21 playbooks that you will receive that are basically plug and play. So I'm excited to, to share all of that. And it is going to be a great boot camp. I've done these boot camps, as you know, Frank, for years. And yep. because of COVID, we stepped back. So this is the first relaunch after three years. And I've got a lot of pent up demand going. I just want everything up front right away. So there it is. What a great way to start the year. Don't you agree? Yeah, it's a wonderful way to start the year. And then your next perfect real estate assistant course starts when? 
it starts, I believe, the uh, March 8th or 9th, but we can yeah, that information will, will come available yeah. as soon as we nail it down. So it'll Great. be in March for sure. So for any of these webinars, if you're looking for more information with the webinars and give you everything you need, go check out the event or wait for the course. Right. And you can always email me at monica at monica .com. I can help. All right. So monica, let's get started. Hold on. Oh. Why am I here? <laughs> Frank, you are here because you and I've been knowing that. We are buddies for the last 15 years. Anyone who wants marketing, I say, go to Frank. He's got it figured out. Frank, the funniest story about you and how we met is when I was coaching an agent that you were working with in Kansas. And she said, I'm going to be doing these videos live from the home and all of this. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, that sounds kind of silly to me. Now, how does all that work? That was the beginning of viral marketing. Yeah, and I started in 2009. As a coach, I'm going, well, let me see those. And I go, wow, that's incredible what you guys did. It was yeah, Monica incredible. asked me to put this on and put it together for her. I was like, I got to do it for Monica, 100%. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, yeah, and I appreciate that. The thing is about what you do is that you are the marketing arm for a great agent who wants to just have the one plug and play. I mm -hmm. mean, you can't hire an assistant that is going to be doing your files to be a marketeer. I call them marketeers, like a musketeer, a marketeer. You know, they can't do it. They're not trained to do it. And if they're trained to do it, they're not trained with a mental capacity to really be a methodical person on the file. A marketeer is a very creative person, as you are, right, Frank, right. as you are. If you guys want to get a copy of the marketing plan that uh, Monica will be following for what she's doing, you can go to getviralvyral.com, viral marketing, and download the plan on the homepage. And last but not least, then we'll get started. And by the way, I promote that marketing plan in the Perfect Real Estate Assistant. That is a great oh, marketing beautiful. plan. You guys okay. get that marketing plan. Cool. Okay. Last but not least, before we get started, we're trying to get the word out for Monica. She's awesome. And you guys are here because she's awesome. 40 years of experience. Post-pandemic, she has her event coming up. We're doing these series of webinars. Um, if... You could take this link. I'm going to put a link in the chat. Here's the ethical bribe to everyone. There it is. That's the registration link for this webinar. Obviously, we're doing the webinar. It's also where you can get the replay. <laughs> so this is all being recorded. And someone can go there and opt in and get the replay. If you take that link and you go update your Facebook about this webinar, not to do it now, but later on, about what you learned, if you drop that link in any group on your Facebook, I don't care where you put on social media, do that. Take a screenshot and send it to Monica at MonicaReynolds.com that you updated social media about her webinar. And in return, Monica will reply back with what, Monica? Well, okay, there's several things you're going to get if you want to. A job description, they'll all be in one package for you. The 30, 60, 90. You'll get how to read a resume and you'll get the ad. So it's job description, 30, 60, 90. Um, the ad, and how to read a resume. Those are key things, key things. And the ad, by the way, I wrote in the 90s and it showed up in the book of MREA by Gary Keller in the 2000s. Nice. I know. That's good. That's like great. It just feels good. I love that. Yeah. All right. So we need to go through, you have five steps for hiring your first real estate assistant. Very first one. The first Step. one is, Frank, you got to know your why. Is it time or is it money slash production growth of your business? What is it? So sometimes it's not, you, you don't need to hire an assistant. You've got it. This is the production you want, et cetera. So, you know, if you don't have an assistant, you are one. And if you like it, keep the job if you want. However, there is a wall that you hit. So are you looking for time for your family? Are you looking for time because you're missing deals and you want to go on more listing appointments or work with more buyers? Maybe, you, maybe you're like me. I just hate paperwork. I, I'm, I'm a triple D. I'm great. At, I'm a great salesperson. I'm not good at crossing the T's, dot the I's. I need people to do that. And yet I don't want to do what a great assistant does. And I recognize that contribution. So you've got to know why you, why is here's the most important thing to know, Frank, when you hire your first person, you're now a business person with a business versus 
I'm a realtor. See the difference? Yeah, it's a terrifying. You have a, yeah, you have a payroll. You have to meet expectations. Is there a difference in the why between time or making more money? Sometimes they're the same, but sometimes people go, okay, I just need more time back. They're not focused on that because their production is pretty strong. In my particular case, I needed someone to do the paperwork. I needed the time back. I was a single mom with three kids and I was losing as many deals as I was doing because someone said, hey, I reached out to you. You didn't get back to me. And I go, oh my gosh, you're right. You know, and I already listed my house. And, you know, once I called them and it's like, oh, brother. So I knew that I needed help. And it's real scary. And you had so much business. It was time. Yeah, I was doing about 60 transactions on my own. I highly recommend you don't do that because you'll blow up a marriage, which I successfully did. And, you know, if you're a, a single mom or dad, you definitely need the support in the office. You don't want to just be the single person moving the business forward. It's just important to make that investment. Step two, after the why. Step two, you gotta have a budget. So you need to have a budget. So interesting, when I decided to hire my first assistant, being a single mom, I said to this business person that I went out to lunch with, he goes, she needs an assistant. You can't keep this up. And I go, I don't need another mouth to feed. And he goes, I wouldn't look at it like that. And he goes, at the time, he says, do you have a couple thousand dollars, two or three thousand dollars that you could pay someone? And I go, yeah, I've got some money squirreled away. And he goes, well, budget that. So really, I give him credit for pushing me. And I can tell you honestly, and Gary Keller with Keller Williams has had the same sort of thought. Well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just fire at the end of 30 days. So it's really just let me see what she or he can do, you know, for this amount of money. It won't be a waste of time. Well, I went from 60 transactions to 120 the next year because I wasn't doing any paperwork. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you need two assistants at that level. However, that was a real clear picture to me that my lane is a salesperson. I, I help people with the American dream. I help buy and sell, and I am not good at the administrative work. So I needed that partnership. So you have to have a budget and you have to have the salary so you don't get all out of discombobulated and trying to steal from Peter to pay Paul. So I always how say many months, how many months of salary should be in the bank? Uh, two months of reserve. That's strictly for that salary. It's not for you to pay your bills or your, your car payment or something like that. It's strictly set aside for that person. And I think if you've got the money, you set it aside now and you say, that's my reserve account if I need it. But I think what you'll see. So here's the thought, Frank, if you're an agent, this is how I sell you. And you have, you pay an assistant 20 hours a week. And let's say you use $15 because that's just easy for me to do the math. That's $300 a week times four is $1,200. Your average commission is $10,000. I'm going to give you back 80 hours for $1,200. Your average commission is $10,000. Can you at least get two more deals with 80 hours? I would hope so. It's a no brainer, right? Yeah. No brainer. Do it. Pull the trigger. Just go part time. Two for months, months of their pay in the bank. Right. So that's $2,400. Put it in the bank, hire someone part time, 20 hours a week. Now, while they're there, you have to lead generate or be on an appointment. You can't go to the movies. I literally had someone say, Well, this gave me time to go to the movies in the afternoon. I go, What? Fire yourself. That's just dumb. You know? All right. You okay. know why? We have a budget. Third step. You need to have a prepared job description and a schedule for your assistant. That is really critical that they come on, you know, when they come to interview and you go to the second interview, then you are saying to them, here is what I'm expecting. You may not know all these things. I will train you on that. A job description is a training checklist, which nobody kind of gets. But when you have a job description, that's your training checklist that you date and check off. And then all the expectations are set. 90% of the assistants that I talk to say they got hired, some with a job description, some not. The job description they got resembles nothing what they're doing right now. So that job description that if you email me with, you know, your Facebook stuff, I oh, will- Oh yeah, the screenshot. Do you guys like that? You got to make, go post, let's say it again, go post a link to the series of webinars for the replay 
And if you send Monica a screenshot of your post on social media, she'll respond with all these wonderful assets. Right. Now, <laughs> the schedule is about getting the assistant to know that the top priorities are done in the morning. So you've got to have a, a, a schedule where they're processing a new listing, they're processing a new pending, they're returning all the emails and phone calls from clients who need something. And so those are the critical top priorities. And then in the afternoon, it's stuff. And so I think the critical thing here is that you have to be prepared with a, an account with money, and then you don't lose sleep at night. The second thing is you have a job description, so they hit the ground running. Okay? Someone can get the job description. Give me the three to five main drivers of that job description. There's lots of things, but give okay, me a couple so, of main drivers. So of why that. don't you just write this down? Everything that doesn't have a dollar sign, which is lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments, writing contracts, and role play. Everything else you shouldn't touch. Well, those I do never have touch, dollar signs. Those are the dollar signs for an agent, okay? Everything else should go. So it's all paperwork, all phone calls, all incoming phone calls. And some of you don't have an incoming phone line. You should get one. So it's paperwork, calls, and keep the agent on track, which means you need to share the schedule of where mm -hmm. you are. Some agents like to be secret. Imagine that. 100%. So basically their job is everything except, give it again. Lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments, writing contracts, negotiating, and role play. I haven't seen your job description. Is that what it says? No, Did you write a job description? Job description has everything it. except this? Job description has everything but that, and it starts with yeah. handling all paperwork, all phone calls, and most importantly, yeah. keep the agent on track, which means keep you on track to do your lead generation. I like writing it where it's you're doing everything except these things. I should try the reverse. That's good. <laughs> I love it. Point number four after the job ad. Okay, you got to send out an ad, and there's a lot of ways to do this. And so there's Facebook. You should ask your vendor to who do they know and say, you don't say, do you know anyone right now is thinking about being an assistant? I would love to hire them. No, you say to your vendors, your affiliates, who are your partners on Monday, I need three names. I don't have to use your name. Who do you know right now could use a job with me as an assistant? Now, I don't have to use your name. They can have a job. They've been downsized. You haven't talked to them in a while. Give me those names. Don't say, will you, can you, you say, you will. Give me three names on Monday. I appreciate that. And then so there's also you send out an email to your database and your Facebook. It says, thank you for your support. My team is growing. I'm looking for a great administrative assistant, you know, and you're not looking for someone licensed right off the bat. That's a gift. If you get them, you get them licensed later. I'm all about a licensed assistant. However, that, in the beginning, you hire talent. You hire the shiny eyes. You hire someone who leans in and talks to you and says, oh, I'm excited. I want to do this. And then, you know, the key is, is then the other places that you look besides Facebook is asking all your clients when you're on a listing appointment. Who do you know thinking about a career in real estate after you got the listing signed, of course. It's asking your friends. It's asking everybody you know. It's getting the market center or your office involved and saying, I need to know who you know, who's applied here that you've rejected because you didn't need to hire them. Who have you downsized from that I need to know? So just if you got paid a million dollars on Monday, Frank, you'd hire someone by Monday, wouldn't you? Yeah. So this is a million dollars. You will. You can make a million dollars with one assistant if you do it correctly and have the right hire. You know, I want to add something to this for the audience. Uh, what Monica didn't say at these job boards, which is very interesting to me, um, she did not say that. She said, go to everyone you know and go to your database for the hire. Little tip, just because this is what I do for a living, is go post a job. I believe, I don't know if Facebook lets you post a job there anymore. You can at least make an update of what the job is. Go put the job somewhere where there's a link to it. And then you can grab all of your contacts from your Gmail, all the contacts from your CRM, all the contacts from your phone. We don't have time to go into all that. Scrub them, clean them, load them into an email program and write something Subject line, hey, I'm hiring. Dear friends, family, colleagues, it's probably been a long time since you heard from me. Just decided to send out an email to everyone I know. 
Yes, I sell real estate. If you ever want to talk about that, there's a lot of changes in the market. But with those changes, I'm looking for help. People are reaching out to me to help buy or sell a home. And I have a job available. And I figured I wanted to pass it along to you first to see maybe if you wanted it or anyone else you know. So here's the job. Here's the description. Here's the compensation. Here's how it works. There's a whole link there. And if you know of anyone's looking to buy or sell at home, let me know. I can help. But also, if you know anyone who's looking for this job or needs a position, I'm hiring. Have them fill it out or contact me. Stay in touch, Frank. Now, I love that. And my only contribution to what you said is I always love to come from contribution. Thank you for helping my business grow. Because then they go, what? Your business is growing? Yeah. I need It's kind of the hire. assumption if you're hiring. Right. You're I need estate. to hire a great executive assistant. Someone Got who it. wants a career in real estate. All right. Let's talk about hiring. Let's talk about interviewing. Okay, so we're still, you, we're still under point four, by we're the way. Still, we're still on point number four, right? Okay. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you, when you send out, you know, your ad, you're going to get a resume back. And I'll just go real quickly. You're going to get the resume tips. I'm looking for someone who has not been a big job jumper, but since COVID, I've relaxed that a lot because people have been jumping around. They're off and they're on. So I guess you have to look at the story. Prior to that, I said, if you had more than two jobs in two years, I question that. Now I'm going, be open to that, right? And so you want to look at those resumes and see if they have something there that goes, wow, that's great. Wow, that's interesting. So I have three piles I divide the resumes up into, Frank. One pile is what I call Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nothing wrong with Kentucky Fried Chicken. I, I got my college education frying chicken for Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Can't eat chicken today still, all right? So number one is, you know, a pile where they have no experience. I call it Kentucky Fried Chicken. Number two, the pile is real estate experience and admin experience, okay? And then pile number three is admin experience. And I look at all of those and I pick the five best ones. And then I call them, I call them. And I say, thank you very much for submitting your resume. I have a couple quick questions for you. Now, I'm not going to haul them in and spend hours on a KPA and a disc until I ask these questions. I'd say, so let me ask you this question. I'm reading your resume. Tell me about your job and your training. I want to hear that they can put two sentences together, that they have some personality. Sometimes you, you're talking to a dead person and you can't yeah. believe it, right? I need a little bit of energy coming across. And I say, did I reach at a good time? Do you have five minutes to answer a couple of quick questions? And then I'll say, what are you known as the best at in your office or your previous jobs? What do you least like to do? What are your, and just for fun, what are some of your hobbies? Tell me a little bit about your personal life. I ask those questions. It's a casual conversation. At the end of it, I say one of two things, Frank, I'd love to have a further conversation with you. I'm going to send you a KPA, Keller Personality Assessment, if you're with Keller Williams, and I'm going to send you a DISC test. And I want you to fill those out. And today is Monday. May I get those back by Wednesday at 5? And they say yes. At 5.01, if I don't have them back, I'm sending you an email later that says, thank you for uh, our conversation We've, we've, we're moving in a different direction. Now, that's conversation number one. If I like it that you can, you can talk to me and put two sentences together and you're not going, um, well, I, you know, well, I don't, you know, I don't want that. I want someone who can think on their feet because my clients are going to demand that you think on your feet. That's who we are. Okay. Yeah. Second thing is if I don't like your answers for whatever reason, I'm not feeling the vibe. I say, Thank you for answering my questions. We'll be in touch next week and let you know where we are. And that's all I say. Then next week, we send out an email that says, thank you very much. Uh, we're moving in a different direction. We will keep your resume on file. If you have any real estate questions or your family, please reach out to us. Thank you again. Done. Good. Good. Out. We now, tell them. Yeah. Now, Most then, are ghosted. Uh, then, but if I want those KPAs back by Wednesday at five, and if I don't get, so what I like is when they send me an email after our conversation, oh, it was great talking to you, blah, blah. Two hours later, I get the KPA and the disc. I know, hey, got the shiny eyes. They're interested. They want this. The guy that sent it to me on Thursday, I'm not interested in him. I need someone to be prompt and on time because I am. 
And that's just the way it goes, right? So with that, then, you know, I'll set up a time for them to come in. And if, if you have anyone do a KPA or a disc, you have to know, you have to acknowledge that and you have to verify that. You can't just torch someone without going through that and letting them know what you saw and ask questions about it. Does this sound like you? Is this you? It says here on the disc that this is the environment you like. Tell me more about that. So you're constantly asking questions based on those, and you're going to spend more time with this person than you do anyone. If you skip the process of doing a KPA and a life story and the disc, you are making a huge financial mistake. Reg, the real estate god, may shine on you, or he's going to throw a big hurricane tornado at you if you hire the wrong person. It will cost you at least three times salary sometimes. For the downtime and the mess that can be made when you have the wrong hire. I wish we had a week to discuss what Monica just shared here, because the first time you hear this, you're like, ah. Well, I can take but a week and do that. These, no. <laughs> well, these, they're basically pre-employment testing or pre-employment screening. And if you Google pre-employment testing or pre-employment screening, you're going to see a whole world of this that's available. And what's available, you know, at Keller Williams is the KPA, is the pre-employment screening, and the DISC is a form of that, as well as getting life story. But it's not just getting the report. It's then sitting down and having the conversation to validate it. How long is that basically second interview? Mm -hmm. How long is how, how long? Well, is let me go back. So, that, so first interview, and then I do things out of order. But remember, I'm Monica Reynolds for 44 years. I've made a lot of mistakes, cost me a lot of money, and I now have my system and I don't deviate. I then call the resumes and I make sure when I'm talking to them on the first go the around that you do not have friends and family in there. These are past coworkers. So then they can make the adjustment if they have to, because a lot of times people put their mother and their sister and some neighbor friends and family. So I want past coworkers. And then I call the resumes and I will go three levels deep. So they'll give me one level. Monica, you mean the references. I'm sorry, references. Yeah. I'm sorry, references. Okay. You're right. So, so you call I'm the going... first references they give you that aren't family, and then you call references from the references. Yes. Watch this. So Frank, it was great talking to me about you know my possible new hire, Vicky. I got a question to ask you. I got to talk to one more person. Who do you know um, that Vicky knew that worked on the? company, the team that I could reach out to, to have another quick conversation. Who would that be? Okay. Get the second person. Then I go another level D. Hey, thanks Jim for talking to me about Vicky. Oh my gosh. I need to talk to one more person before I'm done. Who would that be? By the time you get to the third level, if you do this correctly, you get a whole new perspective of some people. I have not hired people once I go to the third level. Monica, how do you do this when you're so busy and under stress and you need help now? How do you do that? You, okay, I learned a long time ago, you have to go two steps backwards to go 100 forward. So you make the time, you might not get some lead generation in, can't believe I'm saying that. You should get your lead follow-up in at all times. You need to take two steps back. If it's in your schedule, you'll do it. So everybody's got two hours a week to work on, you know, doing these processes, you know, and you just say Wednesday afternoons from two to four, I'm either interviewing or I'm putting ads out there or I'm making phone calls. You just, you know, that's what you do. It has to go. It's a lot easier said than done, but yes, you are right. I know, but that, but if you want it bad enough, it's a priority. Step number five, training. Training and coaching. All right. So you, make, so, so you eventually you offer them after the res, the reference checks, you give them a job offer letter. Mm -hmm. And now they start. Well, now here's the thing. You know, you're you here, no one will do this, but if you did it, you would have an incredible experience for your assistant to be started off correctly. You attach them to your hip for one week. They have a notebook and they're writing down things. They're listening to you lead generate, put it on speaker. They go on every appointment with you. You introduce them and say, this is my executive assistant. She'll be taking some notes as we walk around your house. 
This is my executive assistant. She's going to accompany us on these buyer showings so that she really hears also what you're looking for because she'll be helping me find the right property for you. You mm -hmm. take them for an entire week. They're attached at your hip. Now, what agents say to me is like, oh my gosh, really? They don't want to do it. And yet, when you do it, they've got a really clear picture of what you're doing. But more importantly, everybody's production goes through the roof that week because you have to act like you're a full-time lead generating, going on appointment agent. It's so amazing. So your yeah. business improves if you'll just do what I say. <laughs> yeah, right? shadowing. You're going to shadow me for an entire Absolutely. week. And when you do training, I'm going to teach you a little trick, okay? You do training in three to five segments, three to five minute segments, nothing more is a rule. Now, some will go over, but try to stay in that three to five minutes. Set it up, your phone, your iPhone, and when you're doing training, and you could do it on a Zoom call, and you could do screen shares and stuff, record it, build a training library, because the first time you teach them, sometimes they can't hear it, understand it. The second time, they're sort of catching on, but why would you have to mouth it the second and the third time? So as an agent hiring a new assistant, I used to go, oh man, I got to go through this again. Now they're supposed to be taking notes, right? Now there's the John Maxwell way of doing things too, which I totally agree with. And that is you watch, I do. Now I add dot, dot, dot record. Okay. You do, I watch, and you do it off the notes that you wrote. And when I see you missing a step, I will interject. You record. Because then they need to see where they missed it. Doesn't that make sense too? Yes. Then, and you're building this training library, then you do and I review it. And then you, when, when people say, well, I, I, I reviewed it. And I said, how many times? Well, one, was I supposed to review it more? I go, yeah, like for 30 days, if you want it perfect. Why not? Monica. What, this Frank? Is like the, the, this is so much <laughs> quality like the depth of the pain of being a business owner of training someone and them attached to your hip for a week and teaching them everything. Good. Waste and they, money then, and don't do it. Then they resign. Yeah. Waste money and don't do and it. And you have no asset to follow back on and have right. it recorded. And the key is not some long one hour zoom, but little videos of no three to five three minutes. To five minutes like okay. Lessons. Stop that clip. I just showed you how yeah. to, how to crop a photo. Okay, here's how you put it up on MLS. Okay, stop. Let's do this is the next thing you do. Here, let's talk about writing remarks. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it's that simple. And yet, when I look at that, I want you to change the word from painful to setting the expectations for a permanent, you know, member of your team that's going to provide incredible growth for you. So you, you take the two steps back in your head that you're thinking about to go 100 forward. Most assistants say they don't have a job description. The expectations weren't set. And the third thing that's critical is that there's no accountability and no training. Now, obviously, once you've got them somewhat trained or you're hiring your first assistant, you put them into the perfect real estate assistant class immediately. That's you know all the systems and it's all the playbooks and it's the whole process there is there for them. So they're not reinventing the wheel, which is critical. No so reason. Monica, let's cover the five things you covered today. Let's tell them what you told them. Let's wrap it up. What's well, the five steps to bring somebody on as your first real estate assistant? Again, this webinar is just an overview, obviously, to what yeah. a lot more we can cover. Well, we've got seven other hires or six other hires coming up. And I just want to get clear. You got to know your why on this one for sure. Sure. Why are you going from an agent to a to a business owner? Are you looking for time? Are you looking for money? You're looking for both. Okay. Got it. Second thing is I make a recommendation to have at least two months of a reserve. That's not a reserve for your household expenses, but it's a reserve that you can tap into so you don't freak out and at least hire someone part time. Right. Mm -hmm. Then the third one is the job description and schedule. And if you email me or do your Facebook thing, I will definitely get you that information. You've got to be clear what the expectations are. What do you want this person to contribute to the growth of your business? Your first hire should double your business. 
your first hire should double your business, you know, because you now got 160 hours back. If you go full time, you certainly should list three or four more properties with 160 hours back. Now, I understand giving time back to your family. You know, I'm all about God family business. However, I'm also about being realistic. OK, and then the fourth thing is you've got ads and resumes, KPA, disc test, whatever personality assessments. Take your time. Take your time. Do you teach all that in your course? Yes, I do the whole thing. It's hiring. all in there. Yeah, it's all in there. It's a lot, lot deeper than the 30 minutes that we just shared. Yeah, that's a lot. So mastering that. Yeah, huge. I teach you how to read a KPA. I teach you how to do the life story to find the hidden gems of whether they are victim or victorious. I don't hire victims. Does you know, do things happen for them or do they happen to them? <laughs> That's another way of looking at it, right? In the interviews. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, that number five training. The right? most important one is training and coaching. And then at some point, you know, you get them on board. And if you can, you get into the pre class right away or you get them in so that you're demonstrating, you're investing in their growth. You're investing in their education. When assistants get that support from an agent, that starts to build that partnership. And it is a partnership. You'll spend more time with this person than you do anyone else in your life. It's critical that you invest in their growth, just like you have a coach, you go to trainings. I always say, take them, you know, in the Keller Williams world, take them to family reunion, take them to mega camp, Remax, take them to the events, give them the exposure in a lot of market centers, offices, there's daily, if not daily and weekly trainings. Tell them to go to them. If it's if it's training for an agent to be a better buyer agent, whatever, tell them to go. They need the broad scope because this person may be your person that is on the bench that rises through the ranks with you to director of operation, your seventh hire. Tell everyone about your event again. Ah, okay. So I'm back at boot camp that I've done for years. It's a two-day boot camp. It's the 13th and 14th. It's in Austin, Texas, live. And 995 individual, 1225 for agent and assistant. We want you to come too because it's a partnership. I've got Mo Anderson, and some of you will know who she is. She's wonderful. And of course, Linda McKissick, the number one profit share earner in KW, will be speaking to teams on how to build a profit share and be more accountable for that. You know, I can honestly say that this is my passion. My life changed as an agent. My client's life changed as an as a person who had the right hire. I luckily had the right hire. And Frank, you'll love this story. My first hire, her name was Monica. So she would call and say, hey, it's Monica. They thought they were talking to me. That's good. <laughs> so that was good. You don't need to hire your name, but it was a good move. It was a good move. Cool. Okay, well, I'm going to type in this bit.ly for everyone really quick. Okay. So we have a link. So next month we're going to talk. Let's tell them the date, Frank. Uh, the next webinar that a registration will go out for the second hire, which is your second assistant of the yeah. seven webinars. Right. Got to have business month. to hire a buyer agent. People make a big mistake when they have one assistant hire a buyer agent. That's dumb. Friday, December 9th at 1230 Central. So Perfect. Friday, December 9th at 1230 Central will go live and there'll be an email going out if you receive this with that Zoom registration webinar page. Yeah. And so I, you know, here's the thing. I, I'm from the bottom of my heart. I know how to hire people. I've made so many mistakes, millions of dollars of mistakes. People have sold me down the river. I, I heard the silver tongue and then there was no action behind it. I get all that. And I know how to find those guys, guys and gals out now. What I want you to hear is come to these next seven calls. This is my contribution and Frank's. And I want you to know that you can create your own library of hiring. So you may not be the person hiring. You may hire someone who'll do some hiring or maybe your rainmaker or the assistant that you're hiring will be doing it. Now they can go and listen to the steps that they need to slow it down and do the hire correctly. Monica, I'm typing the link on your flyer. It's not working. Where does someone search to find the registration for your event? Why don't you do this? Because that link worked for me earlier and then it didn't. So if they'll just go to Monica at MonicaReynolds.com, I will send you a link that works. But the okay, QR so code works for sure. The QR okay. code, if they take a screenshot of that works. 
Monica at Monica, Monica Reynolds. R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S dot com. Email her. All yeah. right, everybody. I promised you about 30 minutes. We're a little bit over. We hopefully got some good tips on hiring your first assistant. We'll send an email out. There will be a replay here. Uh, there'll be a link to a replay being kicked out here at about a day or so when Zoom kicks it out. And we'll do our next webinar here uh, in December, like we said. So Monica, good job today. Thank you Thanks, so Frank. And by the way, I highly recommend if you need any social media stuff, any marketing, you got to go to Frank and get Frank put in there what you have for the marketing plan, which I ripped off from you and put in the Priya yeah. class. Tell them that you've got the marketing plan for 2023. 20, uh, they just have yeah. to so get it. What we do at Viral is for a long time in this space, we help you execute a 36 touch to your database. So if you want to get on good messages, quality messages on video, and offers for immediate response and consistently get that 36 touch out to your past clients, your sphere, all your emails. You can hire us and it's reasonably priced. The pricing's on our website, getviral.com, V-Y-R-A-L. Click pricing, you can see it. Let us know you came in for Monica. All right, we'll see if we have any stuff that we've done with Monica. Yeah, and is that the one that has all of the 12 videos or the videos for 2023? Yep, so if if you click real estate, you'll see of all... I just signed a contract to send out, I don't know what it was, but the contract was $130,000. I bought $130,000 of email credits, Monica. So I wrote a contract to buy $130,000 of emails. I don't know how many millions it was, I forget. But from someone that wrote that kind of money and sent that many emails out and I can see that, I know which ones get the highest engagement and what people want to watch that are evergreen, that work in all markets. And if you go to our website and click real estate under industries they're all published there yeah that was valuable everybody on my call loved it and i've sent it out to my clients too these are the because they go oh, i gotta do a video i don't know what to do yeah. and i go well, there's you go. your suggestion you got From it. the guy that signed a hundred and thirty thousand dollar annual email <laughs> credit contract that's my answer okay good all, yeah. right. all right all right guys thank we'll you. wrap it up there monica good job thank you everyone so much for attending we'll see you at the next one thank Take you care, frank everybody. love it okay thanks everybody